Good morning, brothers and sisters. It's a Sunday. My neighbor is driving his diesel truck. Anyway, I wanted to talk to you guys real quick about something that has plagued many for years, including myself, about keeping parts of the law. If you'll turn with me to Acts chapter 15, I'll read you something. And this is not all of it, but you should read the whole chapter. It says, Then it pleased the apostles and the elders with the whole church to send chosen men of their own country to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas, namely Judas, who is also named Barabbas, and Silas, leading men among the brethren. Brethren, They wrote this letter by them, the apostles, the elders, and the brethren, to the brethren who are of the Gentiles in Antioch, Syria, Sicilia, greetings. Since we have heard that some of that some who went out from us have troubled you with words unsettling your souls, saying you must be circumcised and keep the law, to whom we have gave no such commandment, it seemed good to us, being assembled with one accord to send chosen men to you with our beloved. Barnabas and Paul, men who have risked their lives for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have therefore sent Judas and Silas, who will also report the same things by word of mouth. For it seemed good to the Holy Ghost and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than those than these necessary things, that you abstain from things offered to idols, from blood, from things strangled, and from sexual immorality. If you keep yourselves from these, you will do well. Farewell. So, what happened was, there were men that went out from the beginning of the church, and they went into these places, and they told, told these people that they had to be circumcised, and they had to keep the Jewish law. And the church at the time sent these men out there and said, Nope, you don't have to do that. So I think that that pretty much settles the matter whether a person has to keep the law to be righteous. righteous. It's If you read chapter 13 and 14, they're talking about faith. Peter comes to them and talks to them about how it's by faith. So when we're talking about keeping these Jewish holidays, you can do that. But it is not necessary for salvation. Paul and them said, these are the things that we want you to do as Gentiles. Now, I don't know how that applies to Jews. I know that sometimes they did part of those. They were in, they'd come back to Jerusalem for certain feast days. They did stuff. So that's up to the individual. But what I see out of this is it's by faith. Our entire salvation is by faith. We need to trust in the Lord. And we need to read the book of Acts. If you read these these books, you know, I'm reading from the King James, the New King James, which, like it talks about in, uh, I believe it's in 13, it talks about certain ones that were saved that were appointed to salvation. And once those were filled, they left. You know, there were... Salvation didn't happen to all of them. The Jews rejected this. You know, sometimes they would they would accept it, and then some of the Gentiles did, and then other times they turned against them and they drove them from the city. So, I hope that kind of helps you guys. If any of you had, like me, you know, I've wondered about a lot of times, and I've read the Bible many many times, but the Lord's been revealing certain things to me about salvation and about the love of God and about about faith and about you know things in our lives that we see that that constantly keep us from a perfect walk with Christ you know the devil is the accuser of the saints and some of us sometimes we think one sin is worse than the other sin you know and the, the Lord really t- tells us what those things are, you know, and it's, it's about love and it's about 
us trying to help one another and be concerned with one another. And in the book of First John, it says it, that everybody has sin in their lives at, at some point, you know, and you may have, it's a constant battle. This is the way I see it. This It's this battle that we're having with God's enemy. God has a powerful enemy. He was the fourth angel down. He was the covering cherub he walked among the coals of fire is what it says in the scriptures and so our stones of fire anyway the thing is he, he's very powerful he caused one third of god's angels who were perfect they weren't made from dirt like we are they didn't just have a little bit of breath in them like we and adam have they these were perfect beings and they chose with their minds to sin against god so, anyway, hang on one second. So, anyway, I just wanted you you guys to, to have peace in your hearts. You know, that if you are seeking the Lord, and that if you have repented of your sins, that you will be saved. That is the promise of God. Through faith, you have to believe that through faith. That if we repent, God forgives us. Because His Son, you see, the Old, the, the old Testament priest, Aaron... Before he could go into the temple to offer an offering for forgiveness for the people, he first had to go and make an offering for himself. And so he met, he killed this animal and did went through these rituals, and then he was sanctified, and then he killed another animal for the people. Jesus Christ died once as that sacrifice. When he was in the garden, he was talking about, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. And I heard an interesting thing about that. You know, the Jews have this cup for Elijah and these things. And so we know when you research back into that cup, it's the cup of the wrath of God. And Jesus was like, I don't want to have to drink that wrath. You see, he became sin for us. He died for us. Birds are having a good time today. Anyway, he died in our place he was sacrificed he endured the entire wrath of almighty god upon himself for us he took the punishment for us so god sent his own son to do that that means it's the will of god the father the creator of the universe said i know these guys can't do it so i'm going to send my son to endure this for them and then all they have to do is believe in him for having faith in Christ that He died for us and that He's the offering for us that God fully forgives us for those sins that we have. And so if we make mistakes afterwards, it's two uh, red-headed woodpeckers, I guess is what they are. See them there in the tree? They're either fighting or mating one. I don't know what. Anyway... There's some blue jays here. There's like two blue jays. There's one in that tree and one in this tree. And then there was one out there in the yard. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is that the Lord loves you. That God himself loves you so much that he sent his son to die for you. He sent his son to die in your place. To suffer those things that you would do. The thing that you did. The penalty for your crime. And so, if we sin after we... You know, a lot of people read Hebrews and it says, well, if you sin after you receive the knowledge, then there's no more sacrifice. It's, t it's not even talking about that. It's talking about people trying to go back to the law and be get their, re their salvation through law or through these other things. It's really through us repenting and talking to the Lord and saying, look, I'm sorry, I, I messed up again. And I know a lot of people struggle. I've had people talk to me, you know, they struggle with, with smoking or they, they struggle with you know, a lot of people struggle with anger and with fighting with their mate, you know, their wife or their husband or their family members or, you know, people don't look at these things the same, all sins. They see, well, well, you know, I didn't, I didn't commit murder. I didn't steal something. I didn't uh, commit adultery, but all those things that miss the mark of God are sin. So, you know, we just need to stay prayed up and stay in the Word of God. And, and if we sin and we realize that we've sinned, then we need to repent of that specific sin. If the Holy Spirit is convicting you, then you just repent and say, Lord, I'm sorry, and help me to overcome this thing. 
So that's what I see, brothers and sisters. Really get into the Word. That's what you need to do. Get into God's Word and get into prayer with the Lord. Spend some time alone with Him, seeking His face. And the Lord is coming. He is coming. He's promised us this. So hang on. Don't get discouraged because dates come and go. Just hang on. The Lord is coming. Dear Heavenly Father, my brothers and sisters come before your throne. We ask God that the Holy Spirit would inhabit each and every one of our brothers and sisters. That you'd bless them, God. That you'd show them the path to salvation. You'd help them put their feet on that path. God, that you'd undertake for any that are sick, any that need jobs, any that are in worry or depressed, God, that you'd help them, that you'd bring them out of this, that you'd put your hand upon them, that you'd allow them to know that they can come to your Son for all the things that they need, that He is their friend, He is their companion, that He loves them. Father, we ask that you'd undertake for our nation, God, That's going this thing that's going on with this huge division and fighting, God, and this racial tension that's going on, that's being created by the Democrats, God, we ask that you'd undertake for those that are in the houses that control this country, God, that you'd undertake for Donald Trump. That these people would become Christians, that they'd repent of their sins and find Christ. Father, we ask that you'd undertake for the Russians, God. My son informed me that last night they had a detonation of a nuclear engine that they're building for a rocket, and it's caused some kind of a nuclear disaster over there. It's not on the news media yet, but it will be. God, we ask that you'd undertake for the people in Russia, the people in China, the people in Britain, God, the people all over the world, God. We ask that you'd bring salvation to them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, that you'd let them have the knowledge, the truth, the light, so that they could see that it's Satan who is the enemy, that it's not America, not Russia, not China. It's, it's Satan who is the enemy, God, that you'd open their eyes. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray and ask it. Amen.